So what kind of questions do you all have about real estate? What's going on in your neck of the woods? Well, I mean, we've been talking about what we want to do as far as like making income wise. We don't want to work for somebody. Right. We want to work for somebody as least as less as we can. Okay. So real estate seems like the best thing to get into to invest. Right. And to, to have that um, passive income. Okay. So it's also a risk, but I feel like I have a good personality. I'm outgoing. I'm able to meet the people. I can give and still trust in people. So if I can do that with people and get them to trust me, we can go from there and go on and, and make some money. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just more of learning how to get into it, how to find the right people, how to approach them, all the different avenues there are in this this, this realm that we can get into. There's so many right. things: the wholesale, the resale, the, mm -hmm. the real estate, the broker. So I don't I don't know which one's the best. I just want to start. I used to start off where I learn the ropes. I have free time right now. I have time to do this stuff. So let me learn the ropes, do something productive with my time. And then uh, turn that to something where I can start making some passive income where we can just go out and travel another 10 years from now and not have to worry about sitting in one single town or, right. or having one house. We we'll have multiple houses and just travel around. I understand. Or get an RV and just drive around the country and just go visit places kind of stuff. Hey, that's what I want to so, do. I want to yeah. visit all the football football stadiums. That'd be fun, yeah. Not deal with it. But yeah. in terms of real estate and then investing, there's just there's so many avenues. Like There are now um, funds. Like Fundrise, if you don't want to deal with the buying property, flipping it and all that, you can just invest in this one real estate fund and it gets you somewhere between an 8 and 10% return. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just now, a pool of money people are using to, to invest fund, in homes? Yes, fund, fund real estate. It's called Fundrise.com. Fundrise. Yeah, so if you just want to do real lazy man approach and know that you're going to get close to a somewhere between 6 to 10% return, you can just invest your money in Fundrise and go to sleep. Now, if you want to do really, really do better and like take a higher risk, that's when you can get into things like flipping or finding a property and um, fixing it up, putting a renter in it, or finding a property, fixing it up and selling it. Yeah. Or you can take the avenue of getting into wholesaling, which is kind of what I recommend everybody learn as an initial real estate investing skill because that is the ground floor of how you find property. So for example, when I say wholesaling, all you're really doing with a wholesaling deal, you find a property, you find some a home that looks like it's distressed when you're riding by. You find who owns that home, see what their deficiencies are, see what their issues are, tell them that you would like to try to help their situation, you put a contract on the home, then you find someone who buys home for cash and sell them that piece of paper, You've just helped yourself, you've helped whoever's in the home, and you've also helped the person that's into uh, real estate investing. How do you find the person who, when you have when you have the house and you put the money down, how do you find the person that wants to buy what you just put money down? So, so basically you're saying, how would you find a buyer? So you've right. got the piece of paper, you're going through your due diligence process, and you're trying to find someone that would buy that piece of property. Right. Um, a lot of people don't talk about it, but probably your best way to go would be a real estate agent. Cover the mic. Oh, no, you, you can tell it. us now. And no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would find a real estate agent or find some real estate agents. There are several ways you can go about this, but probably the best one would be find a real estate agent, ask him who have been your cash buyers uh -huh. in the last 90 to 120 days, okay. and tell them you're a real estate investor, you have a property that you think would be a benefit to some of his cash buyers and offer okay. him a little bit of the cash money too. Okay. okay. If he can get it moved for you. That's one way. You can also go to whatever county you guys live in, courthouse auctions to see who are the people that are buying cash properties at the courthouse steps. County. That's another way you can go about doing it. And then another way you can find motivated um, buyers, go to your local RIA meetings, your local investment group meetings and just see who are these people in there that are buying properties and oftentimes they'll let you advertise the properties that you have under contract. Okay, okay. How do, is there a way to easily find properties that are in distress? Not really. The, the number one way that most people find them is what they call driving for dollars. Basically you hop in your car uh -huh. and you ride around and look for homes that have the distress signals, high grass, unkept, you know, maybe broken windows, broken chandeliers, mail piling up at the mailbox, wow. maybe city ordinances all on the door. Mm. That's how you find those properties that are in distress. Okay, okay. So drive around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Drive around for distress. And there's also, I mean, there's the houses in distress, but also the distress of the financial. Well, the house can be in distress where you see it's falling apart, 
but also the flip side is the, the financial distress that the person might be under as well. Like they might have some tax issues that you don't know about, or, right. or some other maybe somebody died in the family recently. They, don't, they can't afford the house payments anymore, and two months from now they're screwed. So usually that's what causes the house to be in distress. Yeah, yeah, that's what leans into that point right. eventually. And then believe it or not, you have a whole lot of homes that are distressed because it's it's been passed down to individuals who are wealthy and don't want to manage the home or don't care to manage the home. One of my sellers was this very, very wealthy dude. He could care less about real estate investing. He didn't want to deal with it. And he led to two more properties for me. Wow. Because hmm. he just, he inherited the home. He didn't care about it. And when I worked with him to get the first deal done, he was happy and satisfied with how fast I was able to expedite it. He was like, I got two more that I want oh, you to have. God. Yeah, so. And you do this where out near you? Have you bought or sold places on, just on the internet without going and looking at them? No, I've never done that. Okay. Every, everyone I've found has been either driving for dollars or through a um, connection I've met. Okay, mm. okay. Yeah. Now you could try doing that, but think about it like this. If it's on the internet, think about all the people it's already been filtered to. Yeah. You know, when you drive for dollars and you find that property, you, you are one of the first handful of people to actually see this property and be able to get in control of it. Or but if we get with a real or yeah real estate agent and tell them what we're trying to do, because they're gonna get people coming to them that maybe they don't fall on the criteria, and they, they get houses coming to them that they're under stress. Like, hey, give me that lead and let me go work that lead, and then vice versa. If I get people who aren't really under distress but looking to buy and sell a house, I'll send them to the real estate agent. So you got that cycle right there feeding. Possibly, them. but if a good real estate agent, if he finds a home that's in distress or he knows of a home that's in distress, he's gonna usher them to that list I just told you about. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean. Like I said, wholesale and real estate is the foundation. Like if you could, that's the front line to how you can get some of your best deals. Now, you know, other methods, My one of my favorite methods is I like to buy a home that's rent ready, already. It's rent ready, people done fix it up and all that. Maybe it's for sale by an owner and I try to negotiate them down to 85% of what the home is worth so I can have some enforced um, equity in the property. Okay. Oh, right away. Yeah, because I like to rent and in order for you to make some money on a rental, you need to get it for a deal, you need to have some equity in it, but at the same time, I don't want to deal with having to fix it up. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of people would tell you their method is, they get something, they fix it up, then they stick a renter into it. Yeah. That's not my method. What I like to do is the strength of me is negotiating. Okay. And if I can't negotiate you down to 85% or 90% of the value, I just move on. Okay, okay. When you see or drive by a distressed house, do you knock on the door? You can. You so you you could definitely do that if you want to. But what the way that I do it is, I get the address. I go home. I look them up on the county's tax tax, tax form to see who they are, see if they owe taxes. If they owe taxes, that means they are a high level priority. Like they really, really, really. The tax need. records will tell you if they're yeah. current or not. Yeah, tax records oh, will tell you that. Okay. Tax wow. records will tell you that. Okay. And right. and if you can figure out whether they're high priority or not, then. At that point in time, you can go knock on the door. They're probably not living there. Or you can try to look up their phone number online. And that's one of the things that I've done. I've looked up phone numbers online and I've called people. Mm. And you can send them the distress letter based on the information you find at the county's website. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Wow. So buy rent ready. Yeah, if you're, if you're, if you're trying to buy places you had to flip, you'd want to make sure you have reputable people maybe already handy like contractors because contractors are hard to find yeah mm -hmm. you, well and even having them handy is going to be hard to find because most they're contractors busy. are not going to sit down and talk to you because they're busy mm -hmm. so what you do is you find someone who's been doing real estate investing ask them who they're using and, okay. you, and you're probably going to have to go through about five of these people because they're probably using those contractors on a day-to-day -day basis but you just want to know who they are and then give the contractor a call See how long it takes him to call you back. If it takes him longer than a day or two to call you back, move on. Move on. But you want to have him on hand so that when you are ready to do a deal, he'll possibly come and take a look at it for you to just say, hey, you might need to fix this, this, and that. This is how much it's going to cost. Until you get to the point where you start seeing um, and understanding how much certain things will cost on its own without having to need the yeah, contractor yeah. to come out. But you definitely want to have about three or four contractors on that. Okay. Well, like... Uh Red flags, like what are like, have you ran any certain things? Like you, like oh, if I see this, like I'm walking away before I get into it. Into like a home? Yeah, yeah. Um, it just depends, like, cause 
I'm really, I really don't like to fix stuff up. Like, but you know, there are some investors who uh, take a shell of a home, flip it around and fix it. Now, if I can get a home for $10,000, that's yeah, that's different. <laughs> yeah. That's different. But like, if I see um, water damage, I'm gone. Okay. W water is like the biggest threat to a home. If I see a lot of water damage, I'm gone. Um, short of that, or if I see that the house is uneven. So Ooh. one of the deals I walked away from, either the roof was bad or the foundation was bad. Either way, because the home was older in that community. The new city ordinance, if I had to play with any of that and pull permits, it was going to cost me, you know, the price of what I was going to pay for the home in a community that was only going to rent for about five twenty-five. So, no, uh, no thanks. How? It's cost you more than that. Yeah. Oh. $50,000 and the lady was going to sell the home for twenty, And it was going to cost like fifty to fix it up. And I was just wow. like, no thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not really good. How do you choose where to go look? Like, you, do you look online and stuff, find like hot areas that are selling a lot of stuff or you look for older neighborhoods really oh, there's probably some people in these neighborhoods have been around for a while and they might be under stress so that that really comes down to that really comes down to how you want to invest so me i didn't mind investing in the hood because i know you're going to get those properties cheap i know you can fix them up and i know what my escape route would be at the end either i'm going to fix them up and try to sell them to somebody else or i'm going to fix them up and possibly put them on section eight those are my escape okay. plans a lot of people in the real estate market are trying to find homes in what you call a B, A neighborhood or B, C neighborhood. But the problem with that is everybody's looking for those. Okay, mm -hmm. is that the lower income neighborhoods? Or? No, no B, those are higher Those end. are the higher, higher okay, So on a scale, you go A, B, C, and D. D would be the worst. C yeah. kind of be, you know, mid-poverty area, stuff like that. That's what I meant. B and C yeah. is like a lower area. Yeah, A yeah. is the highest. Yeah, A and B are your highest. Or you can just go somewhere where you think that the income of the homes might range between, you know, seventy-five to one hundred and fifty thousand. That's probably about the average. But again, you're going to be fighting everybody else. Yeah, so yeah. you kind of have to figure out which one of those, which direction you want to go with your investing, to start making your plan to go forward. I like because the one meetup I went to, they talked about the guy was like. Hispanics don't like to pay your credit. They come in with like forty, fifty thousand dollars in cash. Yeah. And, and you can buy a place for twenty-five and sell it for forty-five. You just made twenty grand. One of my mentors <laughs> has a great connection in Greensboro and High Point with Hispanic families. They don't care about buying a house in the hood. Mm. You know, you can get it fixed up, and you can get into their network. They will spend fifty thousand in cash mm -hmm. and buy the home. Wow. That's what got you interested in it. It was like that, that meet at that time. And then I met with you right afterwards. You were talking about it. And I was like, why doesn't that meet up? They were saying it. And I'm a monster getting into it. Now yeah. it was a year ago. Now you've been into it for a while now. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I want to get into it. So now yeah. I'm interested. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, 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 it's worth it. Now, I mean, having said all the stuff about, we've, we've talked about all the good, there, there's some bad. You mm -hmm. know, I've, I struggle with that daycare because of contractors. You know, bad contractors. I didn't understand how contracts work, like having a lease contract. I didn't understand what triple net meant. I didn't know what any of that stuff meant in the beginning. It was all learning experience. It was all, yeah, <clears throat> expensive learning experience, but yeah. at the end it paid off. But you know, that's the learning curve you get and having someone like me around to come and meet and talk to you about it, you can kind of start thinking about those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, it's nice to have that network. Right, and then you can kind of, you know, subside some of the pain you might would have with dealing with that. But. Um, once you can get the real estate really turning, it's a great investment. Great long-term investment, something to pass down to kids, generations, um, generational wealth. Um, you know, once these homes are paid for, and you're still young people, so 20 years from now, you'll still be probably in your 50s have, or 60s. You? No, I'm 38. No. Yeah, I'm 38. Really? I thought you were in your 40s. No. No, oh, okay. No, 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 man. Stop putting years on I me. I know. Golly. <laughs> I thought you were like 40 something. I was always like, man, he looks really good. All right, never. You no. don't look as good as yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, oh my God. That's terrible. Damn, that's messed up, man. Yeah, Golly. 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 Yeah, Golly. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah. It's pretty hard. Yeah, it's all good, man. Jesus Christ. The guy that said I look 40. You can edit that part out. <laughs> I got all the gray in my beard. Uh huh. Yeah, that's funny. Um, shit, I was going to ask you something. Oh, do you ever need to help like with people like helping you out? Like if you're like, getting deals going or if you just start to invest just start the process of doing some stuff like you need people helping you out or i can come in to be like an intern and do some footwork for you and um i haven't got to the point where i'm ready to hire someone to free. do some, some, some help. Yeah, well <laughs> well you, you're still talking about scaling your business 
And the ultimate goal is to get to a point where you're scaling. Um, and you do want to finally get to a place where you've got someone answering phones or looking for deals, going representing you at these network meetings, um, networking with people for you so that you don't have to waste time doing it. Yeah, so yeah. that's something that you could do. You could yeah, if you get to that do. point, tell yeah. me, hey, go to this meetup over here tonight and tell me what's going on or something like that. I just wonder yeah. why you want to go. Well, to I mean, I'm always, hours. everybody's always at that point. You know, it's always good to have a network of people that can go and represent for a common good to build. Yeah, yeah, But, yeah. you know, one of the things that people usually are looking for when they talk about do you have someone that you can help out is someone that might can help out financing your deals or someone that can help out with down payment. And I've been blessed enough now to the point where I do have one or two mentors that have cash money. That well, you're I, on my list for cash loan, so. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sure. But I do have a mentor or two that if I present them with a good enough deal, a good enough return, they'll give me some cash if I need it like that. Okay. But it's just got to be a good enough deal. I've got to be able to explain to them the deal, how they're going to get their money back and what works in between. So. Those are ways that when you want to get into this thing without a lot of money, but you've got time and effort, how exactly. you get involved with it, you know, that's the whole concept of using other people's money. You know, that mm -hmm. bad late night TV commercial that say, would you like to flip real estate oh, using other people's money? Yeah, uh. that's the concept behind that. But what they don't tell you is when you go to those bad late night meetings, they want to use your money uh. to fund their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're the product of those meetings. Right. The, uh, so yeah, so plant that seed. So if you need help and doing that kind of stuff, you're like, hey, Tony, there's a meetup over here. I can't get to it or go check this out for me over here. Let me know, that's getting my feet wet. I'm learning something at the same time. So right. I'm all for it. Okay. I got time to learn right now. Gotcha. Oh, you said something a second ago and I wanted to ask you. Um, so how would, if you go to the banks to get money, what's the best way to use the bank's money? Like, would you have to have maybe collateral already? Like I already have collateral. Can you give me a loan against that? or you have to have prior business credentials, great credit. So now a, a lot, you see a lot of real estate professionals talk about um, funding deals without using the bank because the bank has their strict kind of regimen of things that they want to see done mm -hmm. in order to give a loan on real estate. So yeah, they probably gonna want you to have a decent credit score. Decent, mind you. I didn't say good, decent. So good. They, they, they might want you to have 650, but they're also probably going to want you to have some down payment money as well. Okay. So when you're talking about getting a commercial property, it's not where you're going to live. Banks typically want you to be able to pay down 20% of it. Yeah. So you, if you're going to buy something that's $100,000, you typically are going to need $80,000. Then they're going to go inspect it because it doesn't just become, when they do their inspection and their um, appraisal, it's not just going to be based on the value of the home. It's going to be based on the value of it being a rental property, which is not going to be as high of, as uh, it being um, a lived-in home. Right, okay. a live-in okay. home. Mm -hmm. So for let's just take the last property I bought, for example. Um, the value of the property was 125000 It's a duplex. But the rental income value that the bank appraised it for was 117000 Now, I'm renting it for more than that rate because mm -hmm. I've done one or two little manipulations to make the property rent for more than what they were saying. So at 117000 they were saying it would rent for six fifty. Okay. I wound up renting it for 700 per side. Okay. So okay. The, the duplex? Yeah, yeah. The bank is going to want to see... That's unity, yeah, duplex. The bank is going to want to see income, down payment, and um, possibly some equity in the property. So uh, what a lot of people do is they go the route of um, not using the bank. And how do you do that? It's yeah. a term called um, owner financing. So you find someone who owns property, they might want to get out of it and not pay capital gains up front. And then you just get them to negotiate a, basically the same deal the bank would do. You pay them instead of 20%, maybe 15 or 10%, and then they just give you a loan as if they were the bank and they don't have to pay capital gains, but they're going to make whatever you negotiate to pay them for 20, 15 years, whatever you set. No credits involved, bank's not involved. Wow. And if you don't pay, it's, they just get the house so they get the building back. Right. So. Now, you set terms in that. They can't just take it if you late one, two yeah, months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, maybe after three months, then the house goes right back to them, and they haven't lost anything. Wow. So a lot of people like going that route. That seems like a no greener. Matter of fact, I would tell you, look for, if you see something that's for sale by owner, call them up and be like, look, would you be willing 
to um, do some creative financing and sell this home on a financing. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, a lot of people don't understand how it works. You tell them basically, you know, instead of going to the bank and increasing my debt to income ratio, um, I would just like to be able to give you the same down payment I would do the bank, show you the income that I have in my bank account, show you the income I've made over the course of years so you know I can pay it, and just do on the financing. Hmm. The only problem with that was if they, if they didn't need the cash up front to go buy something else. So if they yeah. had the leniency of not needing that cash right away, they'd be okay. That's Right. So but and me, the, I wouldn't have had, no, I need the cash. So. Right. <clears throat> okay. Okay, I'll look into that one. And if, well, most of my incomes right now is... Our money's been mostly tied up in the cryptocurrencies, which I bought most of mine back in October and November last year, and that's when everything crashed. Yeah, man. So. I, I, I remember we did a video on that, and I jumped the ship. Did you? I, I, I cashed out. When I seen it going down, they hadn't recovered yet. It's still sitting there, so I'm yeah. just sitting there holding. I'm just waiting. Mm -hmm. It's going to go back up. And what people don't understand is like they don't know... They don't understand. They just think it's, it's just not worth anything. No, no, it's it's going to go back up. There's Eventually, it's going to go that way. There's billions of dollars being put into the infrastructure to get it to where it needs right. to be. Mm -hmm. And once that's in place, they're going to flip the switch, and that shit's going to go boom. It's going to skyrocket. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, and mm -hmm. they're just getting the ETFs in place because what they're trying to do is they're trying to get it so your 401k money can start going. Some of it can start going all from stock crypto. into some crypto. Mm -hmm. Once that's in place and money starts going from 401k into crypto, you're talking trillions of dollars right. rolling in the crypto market over a matter of months. So it's going to be nuts. That's going to be huge for the people who are trying to educate those who are going to need to invest their money. Mm -hmm. Like instead of, you know, they're, I think it's going to be huge because I don't think there's a lot of people who know about any of the cryptos like they do about Gerber or Apple or Amazon, they're not gonna, Tesla. They're going to need educated people about that. Yep, definitely. And there's a lot of people think it's all fake. I mean, I'm running the guys who are pretty technical savvy and they think Bitcoin's not going to be around in five years. And I, you're not. You're listening to the wrong news. You're listening yeah. to the normal media. Uh -huh. They're blowing smoke up your ass. Right. They want to stay down until they can make a bunch of money off it. Until they go up. Until they figure out how to capitalize yep. on it. They want it down to like the four thousand dollar mark because they want to buy a crap load of yeah. it. Four thousand. Exactly. And then flip the switch and they're going to sell it for fifty to a hundred thousand mm -hmm. six months later. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Yeah, so I'm going to start beating the street. I'm going to talk to Elizabeth, our real estate. That's my first step is go to a real estate agent and say, hey, can you get me access to old, some 90 days, 60 days, whatever, of MLS cash sales? And under certain under certain marks, under, I guess, $150,000 maybe. And then just start looking for hot regions, looking for places maybe where there was 20 houses sold over here in this region, but only five over here. But 20 investors are really hot over here. So we'll look in that area because investors so, are hot over there. The, the one thing about the... See if you can find a real estate agent who has or is into real estate investing. Okay. That's big. You don't just want a real estate agent yeah. who their whole method is I'm just selling a house. You want a real estate agent who has either worked with people who do real estate investing or they're doing it themselves. Because they'll, under they'll, they'll understand your language. And they'll be more eager, I think, to work with you. They certainly will because other real estate agents will look at you and if they can't make money off you in the future, yeah. they're probably going to like, I don't want to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. But she'd probably give me the list at least. I don't think she would. That I doubt it. I, mean, I think she would. She, she might, might be against her licensing It could be. Stuff. Yeah, people People are not going to, people will tell you what deals are on the MLS, but they're not going to give you the mm -hmm. list. So you can ask her, are there any good deals on the MLS? But again, what but I'm you, asking for is past sales, past sales. I think that would be a, or, or ask her, just ask her, do you have cash customers? Do you have people who have paid for homes in cash in the last 120 days? So ask, I'm going to approach those people. I right. think she's going to say no, only because of she's in Wake County, right there in the heart of Apex. I'm pretty sure people aren't paying cash for Apex mm -hmm. houses. Certain areas, but then you still have Durham, you have the low-income areas of Raleigh, Durham. Mm -hmm. True, but I don't think she does her... So, so, that, so that's why you go to these real meetings and find out who's real estate agents in those. Okay. And then you just start networking. So we start the meetup. I'm going to start going to the meetups. Mm -hmm. The RIA is one of them, you said? Yep. So I'm going to start there with the RIA meetups and all the local meetups. Start going to those. Mm -hmm. As I get questions as I go, I'll just I'll try not to bother you all the time. I'll just try to get like maybe 10 questions or five or six questions at once and just shoot you off something. And He'll just put you on a retainer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put you on a time tainer. That's there what we'll go. call time it. Time tainer. Time yeah. tainer. Yeah. And also, like in our house, if you know anybody who's looking to invest, I mean, how like keep us in mind for somebody who's looking to invest. We got nine acres of land in Cameron with a 2,100 square foot house on it. 
and it's, you can do whatever the hell you want. It's our, open use land. So. I think this started for us because we have this house, and part of it was like, well, let's just move back into it we and save money for two years for a big chunk of change, and then mm -hmm. move on. But we don't know if we want to live back there. Yeah, it's just um, country. country it's folks just and really and not. It's spreading because it's right. It's in Cameron, and next to it is Fayetteville and Sanford and Southern Pines, and all of them are. We're all expanding outwards and we're expanding right towards Cameron. So Cameron's getting more popular and more expensive as well. You might want to hold on to it. I mean, yeah. all honesty, you might want to just keep a you renter. Just keep, going up, yeah. keep a renter in there. Just keep a renter until someone pops up that'll pay you double the value of what it's worth. That's what I want to but I don't get think money that, to a I don't think that anybody's going to just come to us and say, here you go, I want to buy your spot. Well, we just gotta wait till the market is hot and put it on the market. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But I, my thing is I want